For Oasis Audio, I'm Wayne Shepherd, and joining me on the telephone is someone who can help you save a lot of money. Kelly Hancock, the author of Saving Savvy, Smart and Easy Ways to Cut Your Spending in Half and Raise Your Standard of Living and Giving. All right, Kelly, now you've got me. You know that cut your spending in half stuff. Can you really do that? Oh, definitely, definitely. I didn't think that you could before I started, but once you get into it and you start seeing all the resources and tools and the strategies, uh, you definitely can, and anyone can do it. That's the thing that I think is so important for people to know. You don't have to have a special skill set to do this. All right, well, we want everyone to get to know you today, Kelly, and we know that you've written this book, Saving Savvy, but uh, tell us what else you're doing right now. Well, right now, uh, we, I run a blog called FaithfulProvisions.com, and on that, I post deals and freebies and coupon matchups with stores and way to get things for inexpensive ways to save money um, on a daily basis, and uh, post on Facebook and Twitter and different things like that. And then we do some speaking as well, different workshops and conferences to teach people how to save money. All right. Well, how did you arrive at all this, this theme of saving money? I mean... Did uh, you say, hey, I could I could make my own money by writing on this topic? Oh, definitely not. <laughs> What's so funny is uh, our daughter is almost six, and before she was born, I was working for a Fortune 500 company and bringing home half of our income. And after she was born, as with many moms and families, uh, we decided instead of me staying in my job, it really we felt God leading um, me home. And so my husband, after I went, I went back to work after she was born, and, you know, for us it was not going to work. And so um, we had to figure out how to live on one income. And I was bringing in 50% of the income before, so we had to live on half of what we were living on before. And, you know, we were at a place where cutting our standard of living in half, you know, just like anyone, was going to be really difficult. Mm-hmm. We had purchased a home that required two incomes. So we really were not sure how we were going to do it, but... It was probably the first time in my life I had really, really, really trusted the Lord with something that was so big. Like we had, you know, done little things, but this was huge. This was our, our new family and how to, how to do that. So um, I quit and gave my two-week notice, and it was amazing from that day on um, watching God work in our lives, and most especially in the area of our finances. And what was what was scary for us was, we know how, we know the stats on, um, you know, the number one killer of marriages is financial issues. Mm -hmm. And so that really worried us because we both came from families of divorce, and that was something we had discussed was not an option for us. We, you know, marriage was very important for us, so we wanted to set our marriage up to succeed. And, um, but in that, God was calling us to something that really scared us, so we did it. And after I quit, uh, a girl in my small group um, at church, she said, you know, I have been doing this thing for years, using coupons and meal planning and and stocking ahead. She goes, if you want, you're welcome to come over one night. Well, she lit a fire in me. (laughs) (laughs) I went to her house that night. And, I mean, it was like the lights came on. I I mean, I was amazed. I was like, you're kidding me. I didn't even realize. It, it, It wasn't like oh, this is this new thing. It was just, I didn't even realize you could do these things. Like, I had never thought to do these things. So it's not rocket science. It's just things that are out there. So she taught me the art of how to coupon and how to buy things and understand that things go on sales cycles. And and from there, I started using the Internet um, and using, you know, online sales sites and things like that to learn how to save money. But the important thing, um, I think, for people to understand, I think people hear coupons and they have an automatic, you know, repulsion to that. (laughs) They really do. I mean, it's like, oh, that's so much work. I don't want to do that. (laughs) But, you know, the important thing to know is that's not what this is all about. That's a piece. There's lots of different strategies. But in that learning, um, I had started a stationary business because I was trying to find different ways. So in addition to doing that, I'm, I'm a real entrepreneur. So for me, I was like, okay, I've got to find a way to, to you know, give back to the family. I'm not working outside the home. And I'm telling you, I tried everything. I taught spin. I did, you know, I sold scrapbooking stuff. I was working on everything. And nothing was really doing what I felt like I should be contributing to the family. You know, I wasn't thinking how much I was contributing just by being a mom. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was, I was talking to a friend actually yesterday about this and said, you know, it was funny. God had given me road signs all along the way. 
that those were not the things he wanted me to be doing. But I, in my selfishness, was going, no, this is what I, it was what I wanted to do. And the whole time God had been building up this ministry that we have now, and in all honesty, I didn't want to do it. I was worried about the stigma of couponing and the stigma of what people would think. And um, Well, where did, this, so I, where did this cross the line from you just doing this to help your own family and saying, hey, I can help others do the same thing? Well, what happened was I had started doing that. I was sending out daily emails. I had a Yahoo account, and I was sending out stuff every time I found deals, and friends were like, you know, add me to your list. And the list was getting to be two, three, four hundred people, and it was getting very cumbersome to send it out because I'd have to send out multiple lists because you could only have a hundred people per list. And so it just got to be cumbersome, and everybody kept going, start a blog. Please start a blog so we can just go to it. And I was like, "Uh uh-uh, that is the last thing I want to do. I don't want to do that. I'm doing the stationary business. Well, I will never forget for stationary the prime time to start getting ramped up is September, October because the real money-making season is Christmas cards. And I was determined that is how I was going to contribute to the family. Well, all the work I had done for months to get prepared, my computer crashed, lost everything. Oh, and God no. had been giving me roadblocks along the way. I mean, my friends had said, I don't think God wants you doing this. I mean, it's pretty clear. And I was like, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just I'm supposed to, tr- you know, troop through it. And um, that was for me, September of 08 was the time when I realized that that was not what God wanted me to do. And and that was when the blog was actually birthed. That was when it was born. And I had this heart to heart with the Lord. I was like, you know, if this is what you want me to do, just Lord, give me, give me a name, give me a, you know, give me what verse, what, what is this ministry going to be built on? And that's where Luke 12, 24, 22 through 24 came out. And uh, in the name Faithful Provisions, I mean, that was totally not me. I will never forget. I was, you know, getting ready and the name, I was like, Faithful Provisions, that's it. And, you know, it's not your typical deal saving name. It was very different, but I, I really felt the Lord was calling me to do that. So I embraced it at that point. And I mean, it was amazing to see the doors that he has opened once I finally submitted to him and did what he was had planned for us. So, um, so Faithful Provisions is the website. Yes, faithfulprovisions.com. And you are on Facebook and Twitter and all those good things as well, where everybody has to be these days. Definitely. But But I want everyone to know what you told me as uh, as we started this conversation before we started recording. You said, I want everybody to know I'm I'm just an ordinary person. So what are you, what are you doing this morning, for instance? Well, this morning I have, we actually homeschool. So I have a uh, almost six-year-old and a three-year-old, and they're in the other room trying to finish breakfast. (laughs) So I usually get up pretty early. I do my quiet time, and then I work for an hour before they get up. And then once they get up, my goal is to focus on them as much as I can. And I work kind of in between. Since we homeschool, I get a few minutes here and there. And while she's doing some work, I'll go, you know, approve a few comments and chat with some readers, and then I'll go back to her. So we kind of do that back and forth in the morning. And then um, I have, if I have business meetings or business calls, I, I do some of those in the afternoon while they're doing their quiet time. They have about an hour of quiet time, and um, I'm very fortunate. I have, I do not do it all on my own. I have two amazing assistants. Uh, I have an editorial director and, an, uh, and a girl who helps me with all my coupon matchups and helps me do the admin part of it. Um, I direct them in what, what direction I want to go, and they help me out with the things that I just can't get done in a day. So. Any idea how many people come to the website or Facebook every day? Yeah, we have about, um, with Facebook, we have about, I believe it's about twelve to 13,000 readers on Facebook, and then we have about... 14,000 that are subscribed to our email, and we get close to 100,000 per month, people that come to the website per month or the blog per month. That's pretty healthy. <laughs> yeah, and it's and the amazing thing is we, we haven't paid for any advertising. We don't. It's all organic. I mean, it's all – the Lord has opened doors everywhere, and that's what it has grown from. Huh. Um, I haven't downloaded it yet, but I saw you have an iPhone app, so I'll be all over that in a few moments. Yes, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the funny thing – yeah, and, and you know, I, I laugh about that and say, you know, I had an iPhone app before I ever had an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, I mean, we were talking about me being real. I mean, that's the thing I want people to know. I don't want to sit there and pretend and say, I am super mom. I get it all done. I cook. I clean. <laughs> I write a blog. I mean, because I have women that email me and go, how do you do it? And I can hear the stress in yeah. the email. As a matter of uh, fact, you're, you're making beds right now? Oh, yes. 
<laughs> I'm multitasking, cleaning the bathroom and making beds while I talk to you and uh, trying to keep the kids at bay in the other room. Yeah. So. Uh, all right, Kelly. Now, uh, you've been doing this for a while now. Does this lead to kind of an austere lifestyle? I mean, do you guys live bare bones? What kind of lifestyle do you have? We have a wonderful lifestyle. Um, you know, some months are lean and some are not. We, for two years, about two years ago, my husband um, lost his job. After we started and, you know, I quit the job and then the, the stationary business kind of went away, then we started the blog. And within about six months of that, my husband lost his job. Mm. And um, he was in uh, pharmaceutical sales and I had been in medical. And so we had pretty healthy incomes. So we went from me voluntarily quitting half of our income, and then he was laid off. And this is a true testament to the Lord and his provision. I mean, for two years, we lived on a blog income. We did not have to move. No, we lived with one car. I mean, we had, we were, we were not, I wouldn't say bare bones, like we were not in need. I mean, but we didn't go out and eat dinner a lot, and we didn't do all those things that you do when you live on two incomes or you have a little extra. But But the Lord provided in a way that, I mean, I never even thought it was possible. It was amazing. And so um, about six months ago or four months ago, he was offered a position outside the home. So we worked together for two years, and now I'm doing it on my own, and he's, um, he's pursuing some other interests of his. So. Now, your kids are pretty young, uh, so they really don't know anything else, I would imagine, at this point in their young life. But what about people of older children and getting the kids to go along with something like this? Well, it is a great, you know, we homeschool, so I'm always looking for applications and learning. Um, but even though my daughter is only six, she helps me clip the coupon. She helps me, like, she knows we don't just purchase things just to purchase. I think the big thing about this is um, having restraint and self-control. I think that's a big issue these days. And so one of the things I'm really trying to instill in her is that we don't just buy something because we want it right now. If we want it, we plan ahead, we make sure we can pay for it, and, you know, we look for the best deal on it. If it's on sale in two weeks, we're going to wait until it's at a better price and get it at that point. So even at her young age, this is really paying benefits. Oh, definitely. And as the children get older, there's different things you can add in. I mean, even if you're not homeschooling, just teaching your children the basics of how money works and that it doesn't grow on trees. (laughs) You Mm -hmm. know, you know, one of the things, I have a lot of moms who – their kids help them with the grocery shopping. They help them clip the coupons and match up the sales because this is a, a skill that, um, you know, or even shopping when things are on sale, understanding we don't just buy it because we want it. Let's, let's, let's eat this week around the things that are seasonal. Let's eat around what is on sale this week and teaching your children that, you know, okay, let's look here. What would you rather have? Would you rather have the chicken that's $1.99 a pound, or do we want to go with ground beef that's $1.99 a pound? Those are our major options this week. Which do you prefer? And teaching them that because as they get older and get on their own into college, they're already learning to have self-control and, and learning how to budget. Um, even if they haven't sat down and done a budget, their their mindset is not, I can have anything I want whenever I want it. Hmm. Kelly, is this a spiritual discipline for you? Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, because it, even in doing this, you know, I'm sure you've seen the show's Extreme Couponing, which is the new the new show that's out. Um, that is like that is to a level that that's not what we teach. Um, it is a discipline of yes, you can go out and get tons of deals because you could shop deals all day long, just like they do on those shows. Sure. You could do that, but what I look at is I say, okay, do you have a quality of life? Do you, are you actually saving money or are you just spending the same amount and having more stuff? Because, you know, as we say, the Lord says, don't, don't hold up your treasures here. Your treasures are in heaven. And, you know, the stockpiling, that is a discipline, understanding when to stop. Like, get what you need and trusting that the Lord will provide. You don't have to go, you know, overboard with it. And, and I think that's a, that's, that was a real discipline for me in the beginning because, when I realized what was available, I mean, I did. I went over the top. I mean, I was shopping way more than I'd ever shopped. Yes, I was getting great free stuff, and yes, I was donating a lot. But my quality of life was going down because I wasn't spending as much time with my children, and I didn't have a healthy balance. And I think everything is about balance and moderation. And so what I have learned and what I try to teach my readers and and workshop attendees and things is I want them to understand that this is a great thing, but don't let it consume you because it's amazing um, the resources and tools that are out there 
but it doesn't need to be everything. Yeah, it's not an end unto itself. No, it's you do it so you can have more family time and so you can have m- different experiences that you may not be able to do. Like, for instance, we go do the, the Lowe's Kids Workshops on Saturdays, the free little workshops. And by telling my readers about that, they have an opportunity to go out and do fun things with their young kids um, that maybe they, maybe they do have a really strict budget, and here they get to go do a fun family activity for free that they may not have ever known about. Hmm. So those are, it's to enrich the lifestyle, not to take over the lifestyle. And there's another aspect of this, and that is that it frees you up to give more, right? Oh, most definitely. We had, you know, I've always had the desire in my heart to give, but once the, um, and, and we had never focused on it as much because it wasn't like, okay, we need to go buy a lot more and donate. I mean, we donated things when they did food banks at Thanksgiving, you know, or at Christmas. And that was the only time we really thought to do that. And what happens when you shop this way, we have given more probably over the past five years than I've probably given in my whole lifetime just by nature of having, like, just having more of an abundance of things that we didn't really need. So we're in the habit now when I look at the the sales ads and I see, you know, pasta on sale for 50 cents a box, um, I get a little extra in my budget, and then we have a little box out in the garage that's a donation bin, and we use that to donate. It doesn't even come into the house. So it's not that we pick tons and tons of stuff up each week. It's a constant we do just a little bit each week, and that's one of the things I'm trying to – instill in my children and we talk about it why are we why are we buying extra because there's people who don't understand how to do this or haven't learned or they're in a place in life where um, they don't have the money to feed their children or themselves and so you know god has given us the ability to do that so we want to give out of our abundance and out of the blessings he's given us i'm sure you hear from many many people all the time that you've helped can you think of a, a story a personal example of someone that's just touched your heart oh yeah there are so many um you know, I think there was one, I had a, a lady who said that she had, uh, she'd been following our blog and, and some of her friends in her area had, and they had had something devastating happen to them. And um, it had come to a point their husband lost her job and, and they couldn't uh, afford to even go to the grocery store. And I'll never forget, she said um, they were gone and some friends had gotten the key to their house. And when they came home, out of all the things their friends were able to get that week for free and on sale and things like that, they had filled their pantry and fridge. And there were all, I mean, just more food than they can eat, more things than they needed, you know, toiletries and cleaning products. And um, that really touched me to see that people weren't just using it for themselves, that they were using it for what we were hopefully intending for it to be, not only for yourself, but to, to have that overflow um, and to give to others. And that really touched me to see that other people were doing that because you can teach it, but, you know, ho- hoping that other people will take that and, and, and do more with it um, is amazing to see. That God uses, that God allows us to witness what he's doing through this ministry. That's really a special thing. A little of that goes a long ways, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And it's, it is amazing to see, you know, like with right now, we've had the tornado victims and we had the flood last year and it has just been so neat to see people rally together we had a food drive at our local church and someone said to me it was so cool to see that they were people who would help collect outside the cars that morning and they said it was so neat because most of the things that they saw in the boxes i teach a lot of classes at my church and she said most of the things we saw in the boxes were things that were on your donation list (laughs) using coupons and stuff and i was like that is so neat to know that Mm -hmm. people aren't just doing it for themselves, but they're using it to help others. Mm -hmm. So can anyone pick up this book and get some ideas from you about how to save some money? Definitely. And and the premise of the book, which which I hope um, really resonates, is that, you know, you do watch, I've mentioned the show Extreme Couponing, it is wonderful if you take it in moderation. And that is not what we're teaching, is, is to do it overboard, but it's to pick the things. I think it's all about time how much time that you have, because the more time you have, the more money you can save, because you can put more time and effort if you have it. Um, But there's a lot of people who are working moms or working dads, and they don't have hours and hours to spend, and I don't spend hours and hours. But what the book is broken down into are um, different areas that you can save in and different time factors. So you kind of pick Yes, I have a lot of time. No, I have minimal time. What can I do with the little time that I have to save money? 
And so that's the way the book is broken down. So anyone um, can do it and they can pick the things that interest them or work with their season of life or, you know, um, their their income level. Because, you know, there's some people that are just wanting to save a little extra so they can give more. But then you have some that can't pay the bills yeah. and they have no food. So in th- those type of people are the ones who are going to have to be more strategic and going to have to spend a little bit more time on meal planning. And they're probably going to need to coupon on more. Um, but then there's some that say, you know, we just want to save a little money. We're not on a real strict budget, but we don't want to be, you know, we want to be wise stewards of what the Lord has given us. And those people, maybe they don't coupon. Maybe they shop the sales and, and buy things when they're on sale. So that's the big difference. Um, what we see is, is the time um, that people have to spend. Because we don't, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't think people should spend five hours a day yeah. doing this. There's a life to be lived out there, isn't there? <laughs> not, exactly. Not it's a, yeah, it's a coupons. quality of life issue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, God didn't put us here to, to do just that. He wants us to to be living sacrifices for those around us, and this is one piece of it. But um, but that's that's for us. That's what we really want to see. And the other piece of the book that's it's biblically based. So um, we try to feed and encourage readers through. There's scripture throughout the book um, that's applicable to whatever they're reading at that point. There's lots of great resources like meal planning um, templates and grocery budgeting templates, and we give ideas on ways to give and create gift baskets. There's just tons of different things that people can, can glean from there. And we also have uh, what's really neat, um, we have these QR codes, which people have probably heard about. So it makes the book interactive. So when we talk about um, the meal plan, they can click on it with their smartphone and go directly to a page that has all the meal plans and has recipes That's very and cool. different fun things. Yeah, so. I, I, I love that kind of stuff. Well, Kelly, thank you for, uh, first of all, for the book, Saving Savvy, and second of all, for helping us get to know you and uh, the uh, the drive that you have to help others in this regard. So thank you. Well, thank you, Wayne. I appreciate it. And I want to thank our production assistant, your husband, for uh, keeping the kids quiet in the other room. (laughs) Yes, he has been amazing. (laughs) All right. Kelly, thank you so much. Thank you. Kelly Hancock, the author of Saving Savvy from Oasis Audio. And for Oasis Audio, I'm Wayne Shepherd.